Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator. And I'm Trenton Bennett, and I'm also an audiobook narrator. And we are mutually admiring colleagues who uh, like to talk about this stuff. We also have an accountability system where we uh, um, nudge each other further and further into completing our goals and living our dreams. And uh, we want to share stuff that we've been talking about with you folks. This is uh, potentially useful whether you are narration curious or whether you're a seasoned producer. So this is part three of our series talking about AI and yes. uh, what the uh, what the advantages and the limitations are and what the future might look like. Trenton, take it away uh, because Trenton's been doing his homework on this. Yeah, I've been in technology for a while, so I had a lot to to think about and a lot to say on this, and I know Matt does too. So we talked in our first part about the importance of us being able to bring human physicality and context to our, our reads. And then our second one, we talked about how AI itself is kind of a flawed and limited system that we tend to kind of overstate or misinterpret. And so really the important thing for part three here, if we want to wrap it up in a nice, neat little trilogy, is the future. Saying AI will never replace humans is just, it's foolish. It's That's not going to be the case. AI is not going to go away, and it's not going to stop trying to be what its creators expect of it. So the more important question is how AI will replace humans. In other words, what exactly is going to be switched out? Yeah, and uh, it's it's amazing. The um, uh, you know when thinking, well, okay, this is the final frontier. This is where this is where AI cannot possibly replace humans. But of course, yeah, taking history as an example, it's like, well, it could replace humans when bagging groceries. It could replace humans when it comes to uh, uh, typing and retyping things. It can replace humans with uh, with uh, taking phone calls. And I mean, so yeah, of course, it can replace humans with different things. Exactly, it has already started to do so. So, our biggest challenge as voice actors is that the the massive cloud data systems that AI have used have been built on a foundation of illicitly obtaining a great deal of our own uniqueness and compiling that into a Borg-like data cube and how we get around that fact is really a challenge. I mean, we we know that AI is a tool mm -hmm. and we can also choose to use it as voice actors. And I think that's probably the solution. It's to to use AI ourselves as voice actors is not a compromise. It's taking control of this situation and kind of taking back what's ours. And I don't know the perfect answer to this, but I think representation is a part of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us more about representation. Well, there's a book called The Singularity is Near by a futurist named Raymond Kurzweil. And he correctly projected that software and systems would do more and more of our work for us until a point of human machine convergence that lies in the future that he refers to as the his singularity. But mm -hmm. in order to get there, humans will rely increasingly on agents. And in this context, agents are intelligent programs that are given specific tasks to perform for us that represent us in cyberspace. Or if you're really into Bitcoin, we can call it the metaverse. Whatever you see the future as, we're already using agents when we apply for a job because software scans our resumes for keywords and zip codes and aggregates other data about us, right or wrong, from elsewhere. So these systems are already doing this. We already have agents out there working for people. So if we're going to take charge of what's ours, the scenario like Kurzweil has framed it would be that we would create agents of our own. We would have AI that are filled with all the nuance of us, all of our voice and intonation. We can take recordings work with an AI to develop our uniqueness, and we can coach that AI specifically to represent us. And these agents could be used to land work and even perform it for us. And I have a real world example. So Bruce Willis was hired by a Russian telecom to do a commercial for their cell phone products. And then the pandemic broke out and nobody was traveling. The company still paid Bruce Willis for the ability to be in the commercial, but he couldn't be there to shoot. So 
they were paying him for permission to use his likeness, create his role in the commercial, and deep fake him into the commercial. It wasn't perfect, but it did mean that Bruce Willis got paid for his performance, even though that performance was generated for him. So that would be kind of how we would leverage agents to gain control of AI. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Well, uh, you know, it sounds almost like uh, the the craft and art of of narration and of performance is going to be more and more about um, the preparation process and the the presentation of bits and pieces of things very very carefully, so that those bits and pieces of things are captured and then recombined and reused by by the AI. Does that sound right? Exactly. And along those lines, it would be our version of the AI, our iteration or instance of that. So we'd record our auditions, feed an agent each one, and coach it to represent what we would do and make the same choices we make. Maybe Uh we'd even preview the finished product and and guide it. But then we'd also have an agent to help us find auditions. Uh We'd have an agent to auto-submit and auto-respond to certain messages and then flag the ones we need to to review. Uh But here's a biggie. We'd have an agent that scans the internet and the blockchain looking for intellectual property violations. And when that happens, when someone else has used our likeness and our name and our, our voice print, we'd hire a law firm whose agents would marry our evidence with the appropriate legal language and rather than file a lawsuit, they'd negotiate a rights settlement with the agent representing the other party. This actually is already kind of taking place. During the pandemic, I interviewed the CIO of DeviantArt about the fact that they were offering all of their users a system that would scan the blockchain to see if any of their artwork was being placed in the blockchain by someone who was not the rights holder. So we have the ability to do this in these systems. And this is, I think this is where they're going, but we as voice artists, we can't build these things for ourselves Hmm. And that's when our collective associations that are there to support us can do this for us. Uh-huh. I don't know because I'm not privy to the you know innermost workings, but I'm thinking of groups like SAG, you know, SAG AFTRA, PANA, and other professional associations that can build the protections that we need and offer those as a service to us. Right, right. I mean, uh, you know, and the theme that I'm seeing uh, developing here is. Um, we don't have to fight and we're not alone. Um, just, just making, making connections and making compromises and cooperating, you know, uh, it's, it yes. sounds, it sounds, uh, very dystopian to say cooperating with technology or cooperating with the machines, but you know, we, we do that already. So, I mean, this, this right here, what we're doing right now is cooperating with technology, um, and, uh, cooperating with technology and also, uh, cooperating with each other and uh, and you know, having each other be uh, support networks, uh, which is exactly what you and I do. And so on a on a bigger scale, yeah, yeah. I can't build Zoom. You can't build YouTube. Neither of us could do that individually. But we need those things, and so we relied on someone else. And I'm gonna I'm gonna share a little figure of speech that I learned from one of my professional certifications, which is every one of us is smart. But no single one of us is as smart as all of us. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, on that note, everybody, there is hope. Yes. So, for all of us, I am Matt Haynes. And I'm Trenton Bennett. And as narrators, teachers of narration, and part of your community... I hope that our voices in your ears meet again real soon. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody.